What up, everybody, and welcome to Baz on Blades. My name is Baz, and I talk about blades, and I'm excited today to bring you another fine product from the company Petrified Fish. I have been very impressed with the folders, flippers uh, that I have gotten from this company, and today we're going to take a look at the first fixed blade I have looked at from Petrified Fish. This might very well be their first fixed blade model. I, I'm not sure about that, actually. Um, somebody can check that out. Let me know down in the comment section. What we've got here is the brand new from Petrified Fish Beluga fixed blade. The fixed blade version of the extremely, extremely popular Beluga front flipper folder. I have always from the, the very first time I saw it loved that design I never bought one because it's a front flipper because front flippers are for nose pickers and I've got more important things to do than just sit around and pick my nose and front flick my knives so I was really excited to see the beluga drop point blade design which I think is absolutely fantastic I'm very excited to see it get into a fixed blade. We're going to talk about this a very well made, finely designed fixed blade offering from Petrified Fish. Let's go ahead. We'll bring the packaging out. I think it's actually a pretty big part of this. Let's go ahead and come in here. We'll take a look at the label. This is what you're looking at in the blue micarta handles that I have. It is also available in brown micarta and black G10. This packaging is, is beautiful. It's a, it's a matte with gloss accents using the dark blue against the black. The bottom of the box being dark blue. This is very Batman-y. I'm totally approving of this colorway on this box. Uh, that would look really good on a knife. So inside the box, basically, you're going to find the knife in its sheath. Let me show you how it comes packaged up here, guys. Uh, we're going to do this right here, and it fits down in the box just like this. A knife will be in a plastic bag in the sheath. Uh, excellent sheath. We'll, we'll get to that later. Um, this little filler box is empty. I don't know if it's supposed to be empty or there's something supposed to be in it. I don't know. Uh, this other filler box right here actually contains the secondary mounting system for this um, knife sheath. And it is a finely made heavy duty tech lock. Okay, um, so you're going to get the loops for horizontal carry. That's the way the sheath comes. And you're also going to get a tech lock. And then, oh, wait a second. What we got down here? Does that come out? Oh, I didn't even see that stuff. Holy shit, Baz on Blades Adventurer. I am discovering unknown territory. I love that sticker. I don't even know what it is. I don't have my glasses on, but it's a Petrified Fish sticker. We got Petrified Fish branded candy, and we've got a Petrified Fish um, cleaning cloth that's got sort of, that's a weird sort of metallic-y look to it. That's sort of cool. Yeah, I didn't even know that stuff was under there. I just saw that stuff. Um, so that's how it's going to come packaged. Don't forget your tech lock in here. Again, very nicely done. Uh, just the packaging overall was very uh, impressive for this knife. Now, let's go ahead and talk some numbers on the Petrified Fish Beluga Fixed Blade. Um, I ordered this directly from Petrified Fish. It was my first order directly from them, I believe. Uh, they've got the knife listed for $89.99, but right now they are offering a 15% discount. Uh, it's their summer sale, and that'll put this down to $76.50. The shipping was free. It took it a week and a half to come from China to me here in East Tennessee, so not too awful bad. A pretty um, flawless sort of transaction from Petrified Fish from their official website. Now, uh, like I say, these are available in uh, two different micarta colors, the blue sort of denim here, and then there's a brown. There's also a black G10 option. 
all of them in satin finished N690 for your blade steel. Um, same knife, just some different color micarta on it. Let's talk about the specs on it, then we'll talk about that blade steel a little bit. We'll take a look at the fit and finish ergos everything on this knife so it's a sizable little companion fixed blade uh, you're looking at three and five eighths inches for your blade length and that's about nine and a half centimeters uh, your blade stock thickness pretty chunky 158 thousandths of an inch or four millimeters substantial uh, behind the edge thickness pretty thin pretty thin 16 thousandths of an inch and that is 0 0.41 millimeters very finely done uh, edge the handle length is four and five eighths of an inch or 11 centimeters handle thickness averaged out on this radially machined handle here 670 thousandths of an inch or 17 millimeters slightly thicker than what you would see in say a folding knife but much more hand feeling and comfortable for a fixed blade, a working knife in my opinion. Now that gives you uh, eight and a quarter inches overall length and 21 centimeters overall length. And then your weight, 5.75 ounces for the knife itself. Add in the finely made sheath and you come up to 7.62 ounces. And that is 163 grams, 216 grams respective. Now, let's talk about Bowler's N690. It is a uh, sort of a modern-y cobalt alloy uh, stainless steel. Uh, I, I typically, I see it sort of slotted in there in that VG10 154 cm range as far as performance uh, it is a cobalt alloy steel that tends to add uh, a few things to a steel alloy but i think toughness is what they're really going for that's the reason you see like premium uh, tooling like drill bits uh, the more premium tooling is going to be cobalt alloy tooling. It just adds to the toughness of that steel. Um, I've had good luck out of Bowler's N690. It's got um, good toughness. Uh, it's got good edge retention. And it's got good uh, corrosion resistance. It's a, it's a pretty balanced mid-range steel. Uh, there's a lot of steels that are way worse than it. There's some steels that are better, but I think in that mid-range, N690 is pretty decent, and I think most of the companies are rockwelling it right around the 5960 range. Um, I get decent performance out of it. I think the edge retention is right in there with 154 cm and those ranges of steels. I think at $89.99, uh, a named steel from a quality supplier like Bowler, it's a pretty decent deal. So handle materials, uh, again, this is micarta. It is the same micarta, I think, that is on the Victor folder, which I really like. My personal Victor is in this blue micarta. And that's the reason I ordered it, because I knew it was a really nice micarta. It's got a great surface feel to it. You can see it does have some uh, sort of fibrous, surfacey sort of look and feel to it. It's a nice, quality, feeling, and looking micarta. Um, I, I've got zero problems with it. Zero problems. Uh, I've got two examples in-house. Both of them are very nice micarta. I would assume that the brown micarta version is just as nice. And then we all know what machined black G10 looks and feels like. Uh, it's also a solid material. You've got the blacked out um, these are one-sided. They are T10, I believe. I think that's T10. I did not check that. It's either 8 or 10, but it looks like 10 right here. Um, on this hardware, the balance of this knife, it feels like there might be a little bit of weight relieving down here on the handle end. Not a lot. It still, it still feels substantial to me. In fact, let's go with that sort of balance here and take a quick look at the sheath for this knife. This sheet is fabulously made. The retention on it is some of the best I've seen in Kydex at any price. That is fantastic retention. Very firm, very snappy. 
very secure. There is absolutely, okay, look at my hands. Okay, look at my hands. I am putting a lot of force on that. There is no, no play in that sheath. It's pretty tight. It's pretty tight, guys. This is how you make a Kydex sheath. Look at that thumb push-off ramp. Perfectly done, and you'll need it because that retention is good. Uh, the sheath comes with loops on it for horizontal carry, and I think... I've not carried it that way because I, I, I don't really scout carry knives, but this knife is pretty substantial at the butt end. Um, I think with these loops, especially as close as the loops are together, you're going to get a lot of butt end hang when you try to carry this horizontally. Um, I would take the loops off, I would put the tech lock on, and I would carry this knife as good as the sheath and the retention is. I would feel secure carrying it anyway. Uh, on a vest with the handle down on the strap of your pack, if you want to carry it on your belt with the tech lock, if you want to affix it to your pack via, uh, via molly, um, it's going to carry Either way, it's going to be, oh, you know, you can orient it right or left-handed, as with most Kydex sheaths. Um, I think it's a good package that they give you both of the carry options, and the sheath is so well made. So that was uh, the only concern, really, I have with this knife, is the horizontal or scout carry capability um, and with the handle being slight, it's, I mean, it's not, it's not like super unbalanced. It's still very handy, uh, but it is definitely, it feels substantial on the handle end. It makes it feel like a tool, it makes it feel like a tool. And there you go. A knife is a cutting tool. So, uh, just that sort of, you know, a little bit of warning on the sheath fabulously made great design i just don't think that the scout carry option is going to be the best at least for me it wouldn't be that may be totally subjective you might find that you actually like the way it carries that way so let's go back up here and talk about fit and finish um as with every petrified fish knife that i have reviewed so far the fit and finish is pretty much perfect um this knife is smooth everything aligns all the grinds are super clean and super straight look at the light the reflections play across the blade that's how you see any dips or imperfections in that grind and i am just i'm just not seeing anything at all across that blade except just straight flat grinds and it is a um, not quite a full height flat grind uh, it does terminate in this ball milled sort of fuller here on the blade but it's a very high grind uh, on a blade that is well over an inch wide and that's how on this four millimeter blade you are getting uh, what was it 16 thousandths behind the edge 16 thousandths behind the edge thickness so that's a very slicey sort of grind um the etchings are fine uh crisp well done the fullers this ball milled fuller is even you can see where it runs into the spine of the blade is even um the grinds as far as the primary grinds are even side to side um the edge the secondary bevel for the edge is very, very even side to side. Um, the tip is instant. It instantly catches. It's a very finely done. It is not rolled at all from the sharpening process. And you would get a really good piercing out of a, a blade profile that you typically, you would not look at this sort of wider, moderately dropped drop point as a really a super duper piercer. But I think it's going to be pretty decent. And of course, it's going to be a great slicer. Let's look at the fit and finish on this handle here. Let's get up really, really close and look going between the scales and the tang of the blade here everything is even everything is beautifully machined uh, there is nothing on this knife that is not absolutely 
precisely done. Uh, it, it just looks wonderful. It looks wonderful. Um, I don't know. It, there's nothing wrong here, but as far as, you know, while we're talking about fit and finish, let's talk about the aesthetics of the knife. Uh, of course, the blade uh, profile, this Beluga uh, blade profile drop point, I've always, always loved it. The handle is aesthetically pleasing. I maybe, maybe, I don't know, would have gone with uh, satin finished hardware to match the blade, but Petrified Fish decided to go with blackened hardware, and I think that's across all the models, uh, which are all satin finished, but then they have the black screws on them. Uh, you maybe, you know, go with satin silver screws. I don't know. Would that look any better? It wouldn't. There would be no difference in the performance. It'd just be a slight difference in the look. Um, yeah, yeah, fit and finish is great on this knife. It feels fabulous in hand, very smooth. Um, let's go on down. We'll just roll from that straight into ergonomics and uh, utilitarian usage on this. And it's it's about as good as you're going to get, guys. It's a three and five eighths inch blade length, nine and a half centimeters. Uh, so you've got a sort of an idea of what range of use you're going to get out of this. You're not going to be chopping down a tree with it. But as a companion knife, it's just in that sort of perfect, compact, but still um, hand filling and usable size range. That drop point with the very high flat grind and thin behind the edge, but with enough stock thickness to back it up with some beefiness, you're going to get very slicey performance, but also a very stiff blade uh, that you can do some work with. Um, I just I just really, really like everything about the blade profile and the blade grinds, the stock thickness choice on this. I really, really like everything about this. Um, as far as a drop point goes, look at all of that belly. Look at all of that belly. Um, the point, like I say, it's a, it's a moderate drop, so the point is fairly high in relationship to the center line of that knife from tip to butt in. Um, I think that in a push sort of cut, a stabbing cut, uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to penetrate pretty well. It does have that precisely ground point, and then a lot of thin behind the edge belly right here that as the knife penetrates it's just going to slice right through the belly here ah you know what uh, i've done some cutting with this it cuts like a little laser uh, that weight in the handle and the uh, the size the shape of the handle it really as you cut um it feels very solid in performance um i mean it's just a super solid feeling knife it's, it feels just as solid as a performer as it does uh, just an item you're holding in your hand. Uh, it, very tool-like, very tool-like, very easy to use, great blade grind on it. It's a cutting knife. It is a cutting knife. It isn't made to cut. We're not going for looks over uh, functionality or utility here. Um, it just delivers. It delivers in the utilitarian capability of that blade profile and grind choice. The handle is basically wide open at uh, four and five eighths inch long in my large hand. Now I have large hand. My hand volume is large. My fingers are medium length and sort of chunky. This is how it fits in my hand. Okay. It is just the right amount. Uh, men with large or extra large hand size, even for a compact knife, they are going to find this extremely comfortable to use. Uh, it is a, a fairly wide handle profile. And again, at what did I say, 670 thousandths of handle thickness. Uh, that is filling for the hand. Again, it is radially machined, so it's a very ergonomic. Uh, you've got a subtle 
uh, forward uh, finger choil here that is wide open. It's not going to tramp you in there if your hand size doesn't perfectly match the size of the handle. Um, it's just a it's just a good design. It's just a good design. It doesn't really stand out, you know. It doesn't. You don't look at it and go, "Oh wow, look at that." But when you pick it up, your hand is like, "Oh." Okay, yeah, let's go over here and cut something with this right now. I, I feel like I can cut something. That's what you feel like with this knife, and that is the ultimate goal of any of these designs. So I think as far as ergos in the handle, utilitarian capability in the blade, this one is an absolute winner. It is an absolute winner. I think overall, the whole knife is just... It's just very well done. It is exactly the evolution of the Beluga that I really wanted. I always thought, man, I can't stand front flippers if they're not going to do it any other way. I want to see that in a fixed blade. And, of course, Petrified Fish, they've got their psychics that work there, and they read my mind from halfway around the world, and they produce this knife. Um, they probably refer to this in-house as the Bazon Blades, beluga fixed blade i'm sure i'm sure they do i'm sure they do um don't ask them you know just trust in what i'm saying i'm pretty sure they do that so there you go we're going to keep this one fairly short again uh they still got 15 percent off at petrified fish right now that's 7650 shipped to your door in 690 couple of different colors of micarta or black g10 four millimeter stock thickness, 16 thousandths behind that edge on that very high flat grind. Um, fantastic sheath. Uh, a lot of manufacturers of high dollar and low dollar knives could learn from this sheath. And again, inside the box, you've got the second mounting uh, system for that sheath with a nice modern tech lock mounting. Uh, that's pretty decent. I think this is a lot of knife for $76.50. There you go. The Petrified Fish Beluga Fixed Blade. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch one of my videos. God bless all of you, and we will talk to you again.